That would be so true. Perspective. You know, last week we talked about the vision of the church. The direction in which our foreseeable future is going to. What is the vision? How are we going to accomplish our goal? Setting forth a direct path in order to accomplish a desired end is vision. Vision of the church. And last week we talked about the vision. The vision of Glenville is to continue to develop and maintain ministries of excellence. So that when people experience Glenville, they see an innovative, creative, and well-balanced church. That's the vision. That's where we're wanting to go. We're not there. But that's where we're trying to accomplish to get to the end result. Vision. Where there is no vision, the people will perish. In other words, what would happen is we would just be stagnated and die and we would just wander in the wilderness without having a purpose. Because we're having a vision, we want to accomplish a goal, but we have no way to get to where we want to go. Well, the purpose of the church, the purpose of Glenville, is first to lead people to Jesus and then into the membership of his local church family. Develop them to Christ-like maturity and equip them for the ministry in their church and their life mission in the world. The first purpose of the church is to change lives, evangelism. Now, I just came up here and my notes are down there, so I need to... <laughs> that didn't work out too good. You know what I ought to do? I ought to just preach the sermon without the notes. What do you think of that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, bow our heads, let's go home. That's about as good as it gets right there. That's about as good as it'll get. Amen. Somebody say amen. All right. The vision and the purpose of the church. You know, a desirable future. When we look at every area of our life, what we desire, what is built up deep within us, we look at our homes, we look at our jobs, we look at the things around us that, that give us purpose within our life, and we can design a, 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 an avenue in order to accomplish our goal. We see what we want. We can see that we want our kids to grow up and, and marry good, godly individuals. We see in our, in our jobs that we want to raise up and we want to get that promotion. We want to become higher up in the company. We want to have more. So we do whatever it takes to accomplish what we want. So often, churches are so stagnated, dead, and declining because they want to be like another church. They want to have a large attendance. They want to have good music program, good children's program, good youth program. They want all those things. They see it in another church, but they just don't have the desire, the ability to have the wherewithal to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes to accomplish the vision. That is where purpose meets vision allows God's creativity and, and a purpose and a desire deep within us to say, I can accomplish that goal. It can't be about you as an individual. It can't be as me as a pastor. It has to be a God-given biblical mandate to have a vision, a future, wrapped around God's word for a church. It has to start with our job as a church is first to lead people to Jesus. Leading people to Jesus. It's not about a music program or it's not about a Sunday school class. It's not even about a facility. And when it boils down to what the purpose of the church, the first and foremost important part of the family of God has to be the purpose of Glenville is to first lead people to Jesus. Amen. Has to be. It's not about how many people we can come into the body of Christ. It's how many people are coming into the body of Christ that I have an opportunity to worship about Jesus and to talk about Jesus. And once they came into the body of Christ to hear about Jesus, whether they're hearing about it at work, school, home, or the church, the first and foremost purpose of the body of Christ in a well-balanced ministry is are you... Singular, preaching, talking, communicating in a positive way about the name of Jesus. And if we're doing that, the first phase of our purpose. Then it goes into, then what we're trying to do is once they became a, a follower of Christ, 
is to bring them into the body of Christ. You can be a follower of Christ and not be a member of God's family. What we are trying to do here, you know, I, I'm kingdom-minded. I, I think once you get saved, that, you know, your job is to go into a church. I, you don't have to come to Glenville, because I'm going to be honest with you. After all the emails I've had the last couple weeks, this church isn't for everyone, <laughs> believe me. I realize that. But this church is for us. If you have a desire to have a passion for Christ and a motivation to do what God wants us to do, and somebody follows after Christ, and you give them the ability that they can have Christ, and they say, what do I do next? The next job of the church is not just to lead them to Christ, but to bring them into the body of Christ so they have family, they have people that can come alongside them during the great days and during the sad days, when they need to learn about God or when they need to be communicated what's going on within their life. The family of God is here for a purpose, to worship God together corporately, and also in ministry, to reach people for the cause of Christ, membership into his local body, and develop them into Christ-like maturity. That's just discipleship. There's so many churches, so many churches, you, you're saved, and you know that you're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you know that if you died, you go to heaven, but there has not been one bit of transformation within your life. You know just as much about Christ 20 years later as you did the first day that you got saved. Okay, you're saved, but we haven't taken that next step of developing them into a mature person, equipping them. That means showing them, giving them the tools in order for them to reproduce themselves. Many people are just so afraid to talk about Christ because they are afraid somebody's going to ask them a question that they have no idea the answer to. But if we equip them for ministry... What we're doing is we're showing them how to share your story. Equip them for ministry. Here in the church, using your gifts and the rest of the world. We all have a mission. We have a mission here locally and globally. So when we look at the vision, where we want to go, and we put the nuts and bolts of where we want to go into the purpose of how we're going to get where we need to go, then we sit down and say, what does this church, what does Glenville have in store for the future? Are we satisfied? Are we complacent? If we look at our vision statement, are we doing ministry or developing and maintaining ministry that's excellent? Can we do better? The answer would be absolutely. In every area, we can do better. In every area. In my area, in the missions area, in the children's area, in the music area, the youth area, nursery area, drama, um, of course the drama area, we could do a lot better than that, but the drama area, <laughs> no, that was awesome, I was just joking, when they make fun of me, I get to make fun of them back, but in every area, we can, we can do better in ministry, we can't be satisfied with status quo, we have to move into the future with a passion. So when, I'm, when I was developing this and thinking about the vision statement and the purpose statement of the church, I, I had to ask a question. What is it about ministry that motivates me? What is it that, that has a d d desire deep within my soul? What would it be about the church that would say, you know, this is something that, that is worth changing? You know, because if we don't change what we need to change, what happens is our church just dies. I got an email. I'm not going to say who it's from. This is one of my positive ones, okay? So I'm going to read a positive email. Uh, I don't even know who this family is, so if you read the, if you sent me the email, thank you for the email. But it says, Pastor Thomas, my husband and I visited Glenville last Sunday. I just wanted to send you a note of encouragement. We enjoyed the message you shared and appreciate your desire for Glenville to have a vision for reaching people for Christ in the years to come. In America today, we have far too many churches with no vision, satisfied with the status quo, and many are in decline. My family and I recently left a church of 25 years before the very re for this very reason. Changes were needed to reach the next generation and beyond. Changes were met with resistance, and leadership failed to stay the course, losing the sight of the vision. We have been blessed with 10 grandchildren. The next generation is important to us. This message will never change, but the methods have to have to if we're going to reach them. Stay on the course, 
Don't lose sight of the vision God has given to you. Keep on keeping on. God bless. That is the goal of the church. Now, in order to accomplish the goal, when, to say that you're stepping out of the box, you know, when you're stepping out of a box, there's going to be resistance once your feet steps out of the box. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I mean, not everybody's going to like change, right? So when you step out of a box, when you do something new, when you do something fresh, when you're doing something that is the betterment of the overall picture of the vision to accomplish God's goal, it's not going to be easy. And I heard from a good friend of mine today, you can't outdrive your headlights, okay? You can't drive fi faster than your headlights can see. So we have to take a slow, methodical process. Knowing the desired outcome is to transform Glenville into a vibrant, energetic, God-fearing, evangelistic place of worship. We have to be one that has a desire above everything else to worship the name of Christ. Whether you raise your hands in worship or you bow your head in worship, whether you get excited or whether you stay complacent, makes absolutely no difference in worship, but what makes a difference, will we allow other style of worship to be able to worship Christ without being intimidated because it's different. To be a well-balanced, well-rounded worship experience in a worship center, we have to be able to allow the audience not to be the 600 people in here, but the audience is the one person that we focus on. And if we can focus on the one, we're reaching people for Jesus Christ. Because if the church becomes the 600, not for the one, but for the 600, we are going to be divided and we'll never have a future focused on Christ. Our future will always be focused on people. And if our future is on people and not on Christ, who am I going to please today? What shirt am I going to wear today? What version am I going to preach out of today? What song are we going to preach next week? Or preach. What song are we going to sing next week? Because everybody has a preference about everything. But the purpose of the church is not about the people preference. It's about the mandate that God has given to us. So if we stay focused on communicating Jesus, because we have communicated about Jesus, and because we've led people to the Lord, and because they have been redeemed and they've given their life to Christ, and now they're bought by the blood of Christ, they're part of God's family, we bring them into our family so they do not stay as baby Christians for the next 20 years. We bring them in, we get them into class, we, under, we teach them what the Bible says, we equip them to reproduce themselves in Christ, and then we give them the gifts to serve. The greatest part about the purpose of the church is it's not about the show. It's not about us. It's about us. We are the show. We are ministry. We have the gifts. We can reproduce ourselves because of that's what God has called us to do. So when we look at that, and then we understand that the gifts for the church, and then we become globally minded. Globally minded simply means we are bigger than us. This church... Glenville Baptist Church cannot do what God has called the church to do. We cannot go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them to believe all things into Christ. We can't do that locally. But what we can do is we can team up with other churches using our gifts and using our resources, teaming up with other like faith individuals, and we can reach the cause for Christ. And we have to do that. So if I, if I would talk to you today about what is my gut desire for the purpose of the church. I have to go to Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 14. Um, Philippians chapter 3, 7 through 14. Uh, there are seven verses that I believe that are very important when you're looking at what is, the, what is the future, what are the nuts and bolts to accomplish the goal. It says, I once thought all these things were so very important, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else worthless than when compared to the priceless 
gain of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I have in Christ, and become one with him. I no longer count on my own goodness or my abilities to obey God's law, but I trust Christ to save me. For God's way of making it right with himself depends on faith. As a result, I can really know Christ as the experience, the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I have learned that whatever I am suffering with me, sharing in his death, so that somehow I can experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I keep working towards the day that I will finally be all that Christ Jesus saved me to be and wants me to do. No, brothers and sisters, I am still all I should be, but I am forcing all my energies on the one thing Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I strain to reach the end of the race and to receive the prize for God with, through Jesus Christ is calling us to the upward in heaven. My God wants me to finish well. I've shared this, um, you know, when we're talking about a personal vision and pur purpose. Um, I, I turned 50 years old just a few months ago, and I never thought 50 would seem so old when I was when I was 45 and 46. But, you know, when you hit that 50, it's a magical number that, um, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about your future and you're thinking about the workforce and you're thinking about what's the next step, I'm 50. I want to finish strong. I want to finish strong in a few different ways. And I want to give you four of those ways. I want to finish strong. The first thing is I do not want to become complacent. Because we are, at this, we are at the size of a church, we're at the size of a church that we could put the switch and put it on cruise control. We have the ministries in place. We have the resources that we can stumble by for the next five or six years. And we can go on cruise control and we can make it till my end. I just don't want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to coast into retirement. If I'm going to be the pastor, my job is to be the motivator. Okay? What that means is I want to be the God-given inspiration that when we stand in front of you at this pulpit, I'm giving to you God's words through the power of the Holy Spirit through study and preparation and godly influence to motivate us to do something great for Christ. The third thing I want to do is I want to pass the baton to a younger generation. I do not want to pass the baton to a younger generation to a church that is dead. When I pass the baton to the next generation and a young, stupid idiot pastor that's 25 years of age that can do 15,000 times more than I can, when I pass that baton and I look back, I want him to say, wow, I've got a lot to work with. I've got ministry, I've got resources, I've got abilities, I've got a church that is well-balanced and well-grounded. When I pass that baton, and you will know it probably before I'll know it that I need to pass the baton, and whoever comes behind me I want them to know that we did well. That we did not put it on cruise control. That we did not coast into the future. The last 15 years, we didn't just play the game because we could. We made the changes that we needed to make in order to stay focused on the next generation. The next generation is very important. See, the next generation is our future. And if we do not focus on a next generation. The next generation is going to lose focus on the church. Because their thinking is different. Their actions are different. Their desires are different. And the absolute truth that they are bombarded with every day is there is no absolute truth. There is nothing concrete. There's nothing that they have to do. So when you look at absolute truth and then you give the purpose, there's only one way to heaven, and that heaven is by Jesus Christ. 
a postmodern world would say, there's got to be more than one way to heaven. You, ha you can't just say Jesus is the way to heaven. So if we do not com keep communicating about absolute truth and about Jesus being the way and the church being important, what happens is our generation is going to move out of the way by death. And another generation is going to come in with postmodern theology and they're going to look at the church as irrelevant and insignificant because not only our theology isn't correctly communicated to them, the relationship that we should have to them has been insignificant. We haven't engaged them because we're scared of them. Because they're different. They think different. They act different. They play video games to 2 o'clock in the morning and they get up and go to school at 7 o'clock and we're crashed out in bed. But they don't care. They, they enjoy life. And then we ask them to come and sit in a church service for 45 minutes and they're bored stiff because it's our service. It's what I want. It's because this is what I like. So what we have to do is we have to look through the vision and the purpose of a church through the lens of a young 25 to 30 year old that have no ability to understand what in the world we're talking about, but yet through our love and through our mission, through our purpose and through our gifts, we can say, we love you. We don't have to understand you. And you know what? We don't have to accept everything that you have, you do. But what we have to do is we have to love you and give you an opportunity. Yeah, uh, we were sitting at uh, a friend's house and uh, it, 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 a question was brought up. And I'm going to offend somebody, maybe on this one, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, a question was brought up about lesbians. And uh, they, said, they said, Bruce, what if a, a couple lesbians would come into your church? I said, we would open the doors. We would let them sit in our chairs. We would let them worship our God. And we would communicate the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ to them. They said, so you're saying you wouldn't escort them out? I said, no. If our church would escort them out with their sin, how many of us would have to get up and follow them out with our sin? Okay? But at the same time, we love them enough that we're not going to water down the gospel of Jesus' transforming power and his forgiveness. Okay? Because that is the power of the gospel. If we do not communicate to somebody that have issues within their life, what we have become is we have become a church that will not minister to the brokenhearted and to the hurting. We become what we would call the country club for members only. Now, it doesn't mean that we wink at sin. It doesn't mean that we embrace lifestyles. What it does mean is we love the people so we can give them the transforming power of Jesus Christ. The first purpose of the church is to lead people to who? Jesus. Not to the church. Our job is not to lead people to, Gl to Glenville. People to, to Jesus. What Jesus does, he transforms them. He forgives them. And once they're forgiven, then they come to the body of Christ. That's the purpose of the church. Once the church becomes full of people that do not know Jesus, that's when we become so chaotic because we do not have a focal point. We don't know who we are. We don't know what we're all about. So if somebody would come in and ask a simple question to the members of our church, what is the singular most important thing that Glenville does? It should be point people to who? It's not about the children's program. It's not about the youth program. It's not about the music program. It's about the evangelism. Are we pointing people to Jesus? Because once that point is taken care of, guess what? Everything else falls into place. Because Jesus transforms their lives. Jesus convicts them of their life. And you know what? <laughs> Let me get, it's, it's not just one area. I mean, you can pick, okay, the preacher. If you're, if you're inviting somebody to church, you say, oh, okay, please, Bruce, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. <laughs> you can hit on every sin in the world, but just don't hit on their sin. Please don't hit on their sin. Because you have invested interest. See, I could preach on any sin 
I could look, I could be honest, I could look in this section, I could look in this section, I could look, I could, I could just look at your face and I could preach on a sin, okay? I, could, I mean, I know you're all sins. I mean, I'm, the Holy Spirit's told me all your sins. So I could, I could sit down and I could just start looking at you and I could point at you and I could count you out right there, Pat. I got you, I got you too. I could start pointing your, Brian, I got yours too. You want me to say it? I, I, Richard, I'm going to skip you because I don't have enough time. But, <laughs> but what we're going to do, but what we want is we want God's power. But when we have vested interest, what we want is not preach on the sin that they're in. We want to preach about the person that can change the sin that they're in. And that's Jesus. Let's talk about the one that transformed our lives. Let's be the church that points people to Christ. Let's be the church that is so motivated to the future that they're willing to do whatever it takes to get to where God wants us to go. Let's not be transparent to a point that we are so scared about what God is going to do, we become so transparent that people can see Christ within us and they can say, hey, I noticed that you went through a lot of junk last year. I know that your kids were doing this or I know you had some physical issues. I know that maybe you had some financial issues. How'd you get through it? Man, I, I wanted to... I want to pack up and leave. Why did you do it? And you say, let me tell you. I have a peace that passes all understanding. Not because of what I can do. It's because I fell on my knees before God. And Jesus, my Savior, gave me the strength and the ability to go through the junk that I went through. And they're going to say, I need that Jesus. That's the purpose of the church. It's not say, oh, you need to come to church and listen to my preacher talk about who Jesus is. No. You know, you know just as much about Jesus as I know. The moment that you gave your life to Christ and you bowed your knees and you said, Lord, forgive me, Jesus saved you. The Holy Spirit came inside of you. You don't need Bruce Thomas to tell your friends about Jesus. Your friends don't know Bruce Thomas. They know you. So you have the right, because you have vested interest in them, to talk to them about Jesus. But once you talk to them about Jesus, then you can say, now that you know Jesus, on the positive side, why don't you come to my church? Because my preacher's good. <laughs> and we have good music, and we have good drama, and we have good youth, we have all this good stuff, because you want to help them change their life. The vision of the church is to go where God wants us to go. The purpose is how are we going to get there? There may be all kinds of different directions, but how is Glenville that's uniquely gifted by God but the gifts that you and I have get to where God wants us to go? What we cannot do is we cannot look at any other church from any other city any other town and say I want to model my church to be like them they do not have the same people they do not have the same gifts than any other church we are uniquely gifted by God we are an entity unto ourselves God has gifted us with a vision for the future he has enabled us with people that are gifted by God that have a passion for Christ to get us to where we need to go if we stay on purpose on point, on message, and that message is Jesus Christ. Bringing them into the family, bringing them into the body of Christ, giving them the ability to become mature believers, not babies in Christ, but continue to be mature in Christ, and then once they become mature in Christ, equipping them to do the ministry in the church and the world. Christianity is not putting us on coast mode the church if you wonder why isn't the church is full why aren't the church is full if we have the message if we have the transforming power to forgive sin through the power of Jesus Christ why is it every church in Wichita crammed to capacity with three or four services and we would say well we have a message that people don't want to hear we have a message that they have to do certain things in order to be happy within their life. I would dare, 
I would dare to differ with you and say this. I don't think it's the people outside that not coming in is the problem. I would say it's the people within not going out is the problem. The purpose of the church is not to ask them to join the church. The purpose of the church is the church going out, sharing them about Jesus. That is the purpose of the church. Josh, can you give me an amen on that? What happened? Josh invited his family to church. They got saved. His friends got saved, and they were with him today in church. Raise your hand. They gave their life to Christ. Somebody inviting them. Somebody inviting them to church. They gave their life to Christ. They have two little kids. Now they're in church. They are reproducing themselves. That is what the evolution of church is. Inviting, investing, equipping, and reproducing. It doesn't get any better than that. That is how Glenville needs to move into the future. Not stay in the present. Not look at the past. But through our lens, say, I'm going to communicate the forgiveness and the love of Jesus Christ in any way possible to make sure Glenville always points people to Christ. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, we come before you. And Lord, we love you. And we thank you for giving us purpose. The nuts and bolts of life. We thank you for letting us see where you want us to go. And Lord, we never want to lose sight of your calling upon our life of the vision, a ministry of excellence. We want to be creative and innovative, but Lord, we need to be well-balanced. It's not just for the kids, or it's not just for the seniors. It's not just about the preaching, or it's not just about the worship. Lord, we want to glorify your name in every avenue, in every vehicle, in every ministry, in every service. But Lord, when we do that, we want to glorify your name because you are the purpose of this church. It is all about you. Allow us never to forget. Allow us never to take for granted what you've done for us, the body of Christ. And let us take what you've done for us to serve, to love, and reproduce outside of these doors. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we do pray.